height of that stump. Yeah, I mean, he's got a decent fruit stump, but if you, you might get lucky, you might not have a big... Right, friends. So, I'm just going to shoot a... Oh, hi, Chica. How are you? We don't... Um, we're, we're nestled down pretty good here. It's uh, it's cold out and it's wet. So what happens in a wet, kind of a downdraft, I call it, it, it pushes air. So put it this way. If the air is cooler above your chimney, it draws flame and draws draft. But if it's warmer outside, then it, do you know what I'm saying, friends? It's a low pressure and it pushes it down. And that is the time to, these are just some things I, I like to help folks with, with their fires. Now, I wanna show you something. This is something I think about doing every time I stoke the fire, but I never do. But I'm doing it right now. Okay, there's ways you can maximize your fire. It's at full tilt boogie right now. The thing is wide open, okay? Wherever your air draft comes in, which ours is right here at the front, always make sure that's clear. You see, there's a hole right here. Just a sec. I'll actually tilt you guys down a little teeny bit. Boom, right there. Okay, so let me find it right there. I'm in it. See, hook. I'm hooked in. So when this ash all comes up in front of this in chunks of wood, it's, it's struggling getting by. You'll actually notice the flame slow down when you put stuff in front of that. So keep your air intake clear of debris ash and all that. So I always keep this and then air goes shooting from here underneath the wood. Here's another thing, friends. Fires need air, especially between the pieces. So see that? Did you see what just happened? Look at this. If you want it to burn slow, do that. Which basically means you've closed this gap off right here in between these two pieces of wood. See, it's fighting to get, see how slow this flame is right here, right here? It's slow, it's fighting its way through. Actually, that would probably even stop. If we watch that for long enough, I'll bet you this flame right here will go away. Look at it, it's dying right now. So don't think just because your wood is dry that it's time to party and you can just throw anything at your wood stove and it'll go. And the reason this is going good over here is because we got, watch this. Even this little crack, see this? Look at that. You see what just happened? Boom. Okay, so it's not that the wood isn't burning, it's that there's no air. So wood placement is everything, friends. Look at, it's a good, good fire going. This is nice dry wood. So you see, just give her a poke and a stir and get some air happening. See, even that, that's gonna come up nice over there. Lean it up on the front here, right here. Whatever it takes to get that air going. And then, Finally, friends, get your wood smaller, smaller pieces, friends, okay? Just make smaller pieces and this will rip and roar. See all the little gaps there? So we can slow this fire down. We can easily slow it down and that would be by just placing the wood differently or putting big chunks of firewood in. But I, it's, it. <laughs> friends, most of you know I'm kinda. Doing a little reminiscing. I got a little bit more time on my hands healing up a wound right now. So I just kind of going back in some of the, some of the years gone by and uh, I found some old stuff and I, uh, I may go into some of this stuff, friends. This is, uh, this is pretty neat times. That tree at the beginning of the video, skinny kid climbed that tree. That was three years after my accident. But anyways, back to this fire. I, there's a couple different ways I kind of themes I go with. If I want to crack that wide open, that stove, and I want it to burn slow, that's when I try and close those holes off. Getting really good. It's you guys know what I mean by that? So if I, good. if I turn it right down, he knows we're watching. then I open those, you know, those air pieces up in there. So there's a couple different ways to go with that. The, it's like a temperature dial. It really is. It's like a temperature dial. Look at this little crazy woman here. So that's just kind of how I, I, I see it. Sometimes I want to create a fire, but I don't want uh, a, a ton of heat. You, you see what I mean? So I'll crank it wide open. I think you know what I'm, I think you guys know what I'm getting at. You can really learn your stove with placement. It, it's so important how placement takes a part of this. She can bring the wagon to the wood. <clears throat> He's getting it. 
teaching him that for years. He's been out there whacking away at it time to time over the years. But nice <laughs> shot. He's got a little bit. To the... It's my goal to get a video out. I try to anyways, friends, every day. And I have so many times I've thought. See this smoke here? You see? That tells me that there's actually improvements to be made. See that smoke? Watch what happens to that smoke when I do this. See that? Gone. So just log placement is huge, friends. Even that. Okay, look at this. See, that'll close it right off. That'll, that'll actually burn slower. And you know it'll burn way slower if you got a rip roaring and you want it to last longer? Put the sharp edge like this. Watch this. Watch what happens here. I'm gonna show you. We're gonna put this guy right in here like this, which will slow this fire right down like that. Okay, look at this. Look what just happened. A little bit creeping out right here. If you want that, there you go. We just, we just slowed that fire right down. Seriously, friends, it's struggling getting through here and burning. This fire will burn longer now than it will like that. This is what I want here right now for us. Temperature's down a little bit in the house. We're just gonna get it ripping. So you got nice flow here, nice flow here. Smaller pieces will help with your draft. So, we just went out, Buck and went out and grabbed his wood. Uh, Wendy's watching a movie. So we grab our wood from the shed. We bring our wood to the side of the door there. I go over here. And I bring it over here. If there's anything I can help with, it's get a fire going. There's a hundred and thousand people that actually know what I'm talking about. Have a small, have some small pieces. Have your, have your zone for your small pieces there, friends, right? Nice. There we go. People were asking about my stove the other day, friends. Okay? It's a hearthstone, all right? Where's the name of it? Right there. Hearthstone, okay? See how that fire's just a nice burn there right now? Very nice. No creosote on the glass. Okay? Looking real good. Okay, this stove's got good tolerance. It's got a little heat shield on the back. This is a beautiful, beautiful stove. There we go. And this comes in. We keep a, a, a night or two. Basically, we go through that a night, a, a day, right? So we'll get through the night. Then halfway through the day, we'll go out. Usually, Wendy likes to go out because I usually bring it all in and do all that. And she likes to go out there, load up the wheelbarrow, and bring it in. That's her thing she likes to do and split wood. So that's kind of that. But, friends, we're just... We're just relaxing. We're just healing up both of us and we're both feeling stronger right now. So this is good. Just getting set up for the night. Again, smaller pieces, friends, will help with your fire getting going if you're struggling with a, what I call, downdraft, okay? Usually when it's raining, fog will slow you up. Right, friends? So there we go. Don't leave your stove unattended. If you want to leave your door cracked like that, that works like mad too while you're just getting going. Just leave that door cracked. See how that's ripping? You can hear it even. You see? But but you don't want to trust that. So if you're going to leave your door cracked a little bit, leave it so that if the wood settles, it settles in forward, not rolling back into the glass and kicking the glass out. That's a very, very nice fire. Throw in some heat. We're burning maple and fir right now. It's a beautiful blend. Very, very nice. And there she goes. The wood stove is the heartbeat of the house, friends. We got the opportunity to make coffee on this stove and eat on this stove this year with the power outages we get in the winter. We did. We, we had the opportunity. 
to to cook on it. Uh, I forget what it was. I think it was some kind of stew and uh, coffee. So that brings me back to when I was a little kid living out in Yellow Point with my mom and my brother Andy and uh, wood stoves. You got you got to love them. Uh, they talk about once in a while people wanting to take away wood stoves. You know. That would be a problem. You, you, me and Mikey Morgan were talking about that, friends. That ain't going down. <laughs> You'd see us at the courthouse on that one. <laughs> anyway, friends, that's it for me tonight. Just wanted to send out a quick video and say hi. Thanks for all the people on the live feed yesterday. That was a freaking blast. We had such a fun time yesterday. I'm just heaving up. I actually feel better today. I do. I had a sauna. I have an infrared sauna, right? I do. And I use it. Yeah. So I can get back to doing the important things. Work hard, be honest, and I'll catch you on the next video.